Good morning, boys and girls. We're ready to start Chapter 7, Charlotte's Web. Our author is E.B. White. Our illustrator is Garth Williams. But before we start, I want to make sure you're all very good listeners. <clears throat> so let's ask just a few questions about what happened in Chapter 6. We know that the mother goose laid her eggs. The eggs started to hatch. How many eggs were in the hatched group? That's the tricky part. Seven eggs hatched, but there was one extra egg that did not hatch. They called it a dud. Good. First of all, what do we call the father goose? He was around the barnyard waiting for his eggs to hatch also. Very good. A daddy goose is a gander. And then at the end of the chapter, the egg that did not hatch was taken away by someone. Who took the egg that didn't hatch? You're right. It was Templeton. And we don't know why he took it. He's just a collector of a lot of trash, we think. Okay, so sit back. We're so glad you came today. Let's open up. If you're reading along, we're on chapter seven, page number 48. So here we go. <clears throat> chapter seven, bad news. Wilbur liked Charlotte better and better each day. Her campaign against insects seemed sensible and useful. Hardly anybody around the farm had a good word to say for a fly. Flies spent their time pestering others. The cows hated them. The horses detested them. The sheep loathed them. Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman were always complaining about them and putting up screens. Wilbur admired the way Charlotte managed. He was so particularly glad that she always put her victim to sleep before eating it. It's real thoughtful of you to do that, Charlotte, he said. Yes, she replied in her sweet musical voice. I always give them an anesthetic so they won't feel pain. It's a little service I throw in. But as the days went by, Wilbur grew and grew. He ate three big meals a day. He spent long hours lying on his side, half asleep, dreaming of pleasant dreams. He enjoyed good health and he gained a lot of weight. And one afternoon, when Fern was sitting on her stool, the oldest sheep walked into the barn and stopped to pay a call on Wilbur. Hello, she said. Seems to me you're putting on weight. Well, yes, I guess I am, replied Wilbur. At my age, it's a good idea to keep gaining. Just the same, I don't envy you, said the old sheep. You know why they're fattening you up, don't you? No, said Wilbur. Well, I don't like to spread bad news, said the sheep but they're fattening you up because they're going to kill you. That's why. They're, they're going to what? Screamed Wilbur. Fern grew rigid on her stool. Kill you. They're going to turn you into smoked bacon and ham, continued the old sheep. Almost all young pigs get murdered by the farmer as soon as the real cold weather sets in. There's a regular conspiracy around here to kill you at Christmas time. Everybody is in on the plot. Lurvy, Zuckerman, and even John Arable. Mr. Arable, shouted Wilbur, Fern's father. Certainly, when a pig is to be butchered, everybody helps. I'm an old sheep and I see the same thing. Same old business, year after year. Arabelle arrives with his twenty-two, shoots the... Stop! screamed Wilbur. I don't want to die. Save me, somebody, save me. Fern was just about to jump up when a voice was heard. 
Be quiet, Wilbur, said Charlotte, who had been listening to this awful conversation. I can't be quiet, screamed Wilbur, racing up and down. I don't want to be killed. I don't want to die. Is it true what the old sheep says, Charlotte? Is it true that they're going to kill me when the cold weather comes? Well, said the spider, plucking thoughtfully at her web. The old sheep has been around this barn a long time. She has seen many a spring pig come and go. If she says they plan to kill you, I'm sure it's true. But it's also the dirtiest trick I ever heard of. What people don't think of. Wilbur burst into tears. I don't want to die, he moaned. I want to stay alive right here in my comfortable manure pile with all my friends. I want to breathe the beautiful air and lie in the beautiful sun. You're certainly making a beautiful noise, snapped the old sheep. But I don't want to die, screamed Wilbur, throwing himself to the ground. You shall not die, said Charlotte briskly. What? Really? cried Wilbur. Who's going to save me? I am, said Charlotte. How? asked Wilbur. Well, that remains to be seen, but I am going to save you, and I want you to be quiet, to quiet down now immediately. You're carrying on in a childish way. Now stop your crying. I can't stand hysterics. That was a short chapter, everybody. Tomorrow we'll read chapter eight, A Talk at Home. And don't you think it's a wonderful friendship that Charlotte and Wilbur have, and now they're going to test their friendship. We'll see if Charlotte can help Wilbur. Have a great day, everybody. We hope you're reading other books and doing some schoolwork too, and we will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye now.